Let's talk about Minotaurs. Welcome to my channel. I focus on tabletop role-playing games, video games, and science fiction. Minotaurs are mentioned in original Dungeons and Dragons, though there's no picture uh, from original Dungeons and Dragons. The first picture is in the first edition. The short description in um, Men and, and Monsters and Treasure in the original Dungeons and Dragons says that they're man-eaters, that they never check morale, they always attack, and they will pursue as long as their prey is in sight. That's about the description of them. They give them some of the stats. First edition changes a few things. First off, they, they again, they're man-eaters. It says that they're not particularly intelligent, but they're cunning and have en excellent senses, and they will attack fear. This is the first one that mentions that they have two attacks, the butt and the bite, and that they have their own language. The second edition changes a few things. Again, they're man-eaters. They're very strong, not particularly intelligent, cunning, have excellent senses. They have their own language, but it says that they're always male that there are no female minotaurs, that uh, when a minotaur mates with a female human or whatever, they produce a minotaur and that offspring is always male. So that's an interesting comment there that's, uh, that will change as we get through. But it says, the other interesting line, which was that gnolls are their natural enemy. That's not mentioned in any other edition. Third edition goes through much of the same rehashing of it, but at th that's where it says that they no longer have their own language, but that they speak giant, which is a subtle change. Um, fourth edition comes back with two almost contradictory things to me, anyway. They're hulking and dim-witted. That's two phrases that are in the fourth edition, but it also mentions Minotaur cities. And I guess you can have be dim-witted and have a city, I guess, is the, the phrase that it's there. But they, so you, you get to, you have, dim, uh, you have Minotaur cities, and there's implication that they have male and female because that they have cities, and, they t and so on. In the fifth edition, we get back a statement that they're carnivore. It doesn't mention man-eater. It says carnivore. And they care little for strategy and tactics. They seldom organize and don't respect order or hierarchy. That's out of the monster manual. But then there's this interesting unearthed arcana about waterborne adventures, which I would not have thought to look there, except Google gave me some links there. It says that the Minotaurs believe the weak should perish and the strong must rule. Uh, they prize strength, cunning, and intellect. That's the first one to mention intellect because they, it, the fourth edition, they, they were listed as dim-witted. And they actually give the rules in the Unearthed Arcana for playing the Minotaur as a player character which you add plus one to strength, and then you get plus one to one of the following, strength, intelligence, or wisdom, which is an unusual combination because none of the other races in the player handbook, at least the ones that I look through, player handbook or volos, can you, except humans, do you get a plus one in strength and intelligence or plus one in strength and wisdom? So, or you could have a plus two in strength. It, it's sort of an odd combination. They're not the strongest because they only have a total of two pluses, and many other the other races have three. Orcs have one, and I think it was can't was it kobolds have zero or something. But it's the you have to take a, a look at this. So, what do we have to say about kobolds? If I was playing them. It's the interesting question. Are they constructs or are they a species? The unearthed arcana, and basically the, the argument is that they are a race or species that's there. 
they are at least carnivorous that they're not like they're not like a cow that or um, a bovine they want they 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 have they they eat it talks about their ability to butt with their horns but it doesn't describe their um, uh, anything else uh, uh, it no longer mentions bite which was in the earlier uh, editions and then the fifth edition or maybe I missed it but I didn't see the bite fr from the from that so that they've they've got the the horns as a constant weapon and they can charge so if you were if I was going to have some characters run into gnolls, I wouldn't do the dim wittedness because that seems to be though that goes way back in there. I kind of like the idea that they're intelligent, they're an intelligent race, that they have cities, but that also doesn't fit well with their they don't respect authority or hierarchy but they do believe that the strong must rule which means that there's some contradictions here particularly between the unearthed arcana and the the fifth edition monster manual because if you don't respect authority or hierarchy but the, the you do believe that the strong must rule then do, don't you sort of build a hierarchy based upon strength you know, it's the strongest and most powerful, which uh, you, you run into, you know, the greatest warrior is the, is the leader, is sort of the implicit nature of that, that you run into, you know, in theory, that's the way the orcs work, in theory, that's the way hobgoblins work. So you run into, you know, the strong survive, and they're the, they're the leaders, but that does imply a hierarchy. But they, I guess that they're more disrespectful and they're they're more arrogant with regard to that, and that they seldom organ, organize. The one with the unearthed arcana is it makes them seafaring, which is an interesting twist on that. I'm not sure how I would feel about that one. So actually, I was looking through. I don't think I've actually had minotaurs in a campaign. I've had centaurs, but I've never had minotaurs. And it sort of makes the, some interesting questions about uh, how you would establish, if you were going to make them intelligent and you establish minotaur cities, minotaur holdings, how would their relationships be? I think that they left something out that goes back to second edition, which I bring forward, that gnolls dislike them because that adds an, it's always interesting to add some conflict. And if you've got a nat uh, natural racial ha uh, hatred, that would be something that would be very, that I kind of like to put into that. So that the gnolls should be um, their, the, the, their natural enemy that they would dislike and fight and hunt them. There's always this thing about the maze that they can remember the maze or that they know the maze or, things like that if you want to put mazes but <clears throat> whenever I've played players avoid mazes they hate mazes whereas the DMs you go oh it's great I'll draw this maze up and the play players hate mazes <laughs> at least I've never it, uh, it took a couple of questions and have any of you ever had mazes in your campaign that players enjoyed rather than it was just being tedious of going through the maze that's an interesting question. Have you ever done that? Have you ever ran a campaign with mazes? And have you put minotaurs in your campaign, either as monsters or as play, uh, uh, NPCs or as player characters? So what have you done with minotaurs? I mean, I haven't done much. I'm thinking more about doing more with them after going through this research. So I'd like to hear your comments about that. Thank you for watching my video. I look forward to learning what you think about this video. Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate all your comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. I appreciate both forms of feedback. If you're new here and would like to subscribe, you can click on the icon on the left. If you're interested, there's more content on the right.